let you take over. All right. So for those of you guys that are joining us via Facebook Live this morning, we wanted to kind of show you guys a little intro into what you guys get with the Flight Medical Provider Livestream course. And we also wanted to send a huge shout out to Fairfax County Fire and Rescue and Chris Crow both um, for putting this all together. You know, we have 45, I think 50 people participating online today, and it's really exciting. So we wanted to kind of give you guys an intro because there's been a lot of things floating around about, you know, when are we going to come back with in-person courses? And unfortunately, we're not planning on coming back with in-person and courses until probably spring of 2021 or at least until we have a vaccine that is in place and working. Um, the reason being is morally and characterly, um, IEMED just doesn't feel justifiably right putting a bunch of frontline clinicians in a closed door space. And so even though we can socially distance and keep uh, our spacing apart, you know, we want to take the lead here and basically provide, you know, a safe learning environment. And I want to show everybody, you know, with Jim Green, who's going to be our lead and primary instructor, and Andy Fadino, who's our actually lead flight paramedic, we want to show and demonstrate kind of what our learning environment is via the virtual world. Um, because, you know, we don't want that to be a hang up. You know, if you have educational goals, you're trying to grow or trying to maybe knock out your national registry, you know, we want to make sure that you guys can see exactly what you're going to be getting in a course and kind of see some of the dynamics that go on. So hopefully you guys will enjoy Jim and his ABG lecture this morning. So, and with that, just want to say once again, thank you very much for Fairfax County Fire and Rescue. Um, we sincerely appreciate the partnership and the collaboration. You guys have a great day and stay safe. All yours, brother. You, All right. I don't have to unhost you. Nope, I've got all the controls. All right, awesome. So here we are, guys, finally. Some clinical stuff. We're going to get right into it. Uh, too open though. I can't go forward into anything to do with physiology without making this an emphasis first. The incredible physiology that is the human body. It is, the human body is resilient. It is self-healing, self-regulating. Uh, it's adaptive to multiple environments. You're going to see that throughout the course. Uh, multiple envir environments, multiple conditions, okay? And it's incredibly, incredibly efficient at getting this done. Uh, all part of this principle called homeostasis. You study medicine, you hear about homeostasis, which is a state of basically just balance, having the body at ease, having, having regulated the highs and lows, uh, and then knowing when to move the scale to, to accomplish that, get things back to, to neutral, okay? Uh, wait until you see how many balancing acts we point out through, the, through this course when we get into the rest of the human physiology, uh, the feedback loops that feed them and, and make them move and make them work. Uh, I'll do the best I can to emphasize these in the course, give you ways to remember them. Uh, but to open, we are starting at even smaller than like cellular level at this point. We're talking molecular level. There's a little bit of chemistry coming, don't freak out. Uh, but we're going to be talking about compounds and how the body regulates them into effect, how they affect the body in turn, how they change the way some of these balances and things work. So uh, that being said, take this to the bank. If you are working in medicine, all of medicine is knowing human physiology. It's knowing normal so that then you can determine and recognize abnormal, detect the pathology, detect the disturbance, uh, and then use the body's own physiology to make those corrections, move, move the scale, move the needle, right? All right. So ABGs, studying a patient's acid-base balance. This is going to give us uh, a reflection of the patient's overall physiology, but more specifically, we're going to be honing in in critical, critical care medicine on their respiratory and their metabolic systems and how they're functioning, okay? It gives us a snapshot of our critical, critically ill patient. Um, we are gonna use ABGs particularly to trend. You're gonna get one maybe at the referring center. You may have the ability to trend them in transport, which would be awesome. Uh, and then there, it is about continuity of care. When you move from the referring center to the receiving center and they redraw an ABG and they're like, hey, you know what, what they started, what you continued or changed in transport, they're looking good. This is working for those patients. So now we know what's the best approach to go most efficiently. Um, and uh, importantly today, when we get into airway and ventilation, it's going to be about ensuring that we are giving the patient exactly the ventilatory needs that they, that they have. Okay. So holy cow on the screen, there's chemistry. Don't worry. We're going to break this down. I'm going to show you how actually how cool this is. Okay. Let me get where I can start marking some screen. Don't focus on anything in this equation yet, except for right here. This is their, the carbonic acid equation uh, formula, all right? That that I just circled in the center is carbonic acid. 
Uh, it's an acid like anything else in the body. It exists in a state of sort of flux though. I want you to sort of think of any chemistry equation as a little bit of the seesaw. Okay, there's a principle in chemistry out there called the Chatelier's principle. And the idea is that if you sort of raise one side, okay, if you have high levels of something on this side, it drives that equation in the other direction. So you can expect what's over here to also come up. All right, this is gonna be important. So if this carbonic acid is our pivot point, Let's talk about the players on each side. Well, over here, starting on the right, H ion, hydrogen, and bicarbonate ion, HC3, HCO3, okay? Uh, starting with the H ion, we're gonna talk about this guy a lot. And from here forward, I need you to just put it in your head, hydrogen ion equals acid, okay? All the acids in the body, if they have any type of de deregulation, any type of coming out of a cell, uh, and starting to move down their own equations, they are releasing hydrogen ion. You're also gonna hear hydrogen ion called a proton sometimes in medicine. When you see H ion, when you see in your notes or in some of the slides, or if you see it on the dump sheet, increase in H ion, you are thinking more acid, okay? HCO3 is bicarbonate, and you're gonna be familiar with that when you think in your practice about sodium bicarb, sodium bicarbonate. Bicarb is the buffer to an H ion. They bind together and form carbonic acid, which is sort of the transport stable version, which then if you follow this formula across to the other direction, dissociates into carbon dioxide and water. Now, if you sort of look down below and see the way that we've included these organs down below, you kind of get the idea where we're going here. Bicarb is produced, reserved, and stored in the kidneys. And it's available to us constantly, very quickly, to buffer hydrogen ion. So if for some reason we are adding hydrogen ion, if we are adding acid to our body, think of ways that we add acid to the body. So more cellular metabolism. You go, you get up on the treadmill, or maybe you respond to a fire, and you got your turnout here, your temperature's up, your breathing rate, and your metabolic muscle use, everything's going up. Your body's cranking acid out, okay? It has to clear it. Changes in pH, changes in acid levels are going to change the way the body functions dramatically. We're going to have to cover all that. But what I'm telling you is the body will, through the kidneys, release bicarb, bond those two up so that it can move it to the place to get rid of it. And if you look across the equation, so the lungs, this is one of our best ways to regulate that acid off. So when you start thinking about, yeah, high acid levels, this is where we're going to push it across. Okay? So. Hydrogen ion, from here forward for the day and for the week, acid. Bicarb is our base, okay? And with that principle of increasing one or the other, okay, it's going to push that equation. Now, that equation works both ways. What if we push CO2 high? That same principle says, yep, then you'll end up with more H. You're in clinical practice already. You know that COPD patients, patients that air trap, they have more CO, they have more CO2, or a patient that hypoventilates, right? Um, maybe it's a narcotic overdose, maybe it's a head injury, and when we find them, they're hypoventilated, and then we pull gases on them, and their acid levels are way bad. That's because that CO2 was pushing that formula to the other side. Follow? So it goes either way, and that's medicine. That's us being able to apply the body's physiology against itself it out. So our different buffer systems that are available to us, bicarb and carbonic acid. This is the fastest one. This is because these are soluble in, in, the, in the blood serum as it is. Uh, if the body's H uh, hydrogen ion level goes up, bicarb latches on, stabilizes that into the acid form, pushes it to the lungs, dissociates it, and helps get rid of it, helps eliminate it. Lowers pH within seconds or modulates pH within seconds. Within minutes, your lungs will start kicking in. Ideally, your uh, respiratory centers are gonna recognize these high acid levels. That is the primary uh, stimulus for taking breaths. And your brainstem, your medulla, your pond, they're gonna say, yep, time to breathe. And it's gonna increase your respiratory drive. We're gonna talk about that in the coming chapter this afternoon too. And that happens within minutes. The more CO2 that we're blowing off, uh, the more we are actually drawing that equation this way. Think of it that way. If we were to raise H ion, Sure, that's gonna push this equation that way. 
But if we're also blowing off CO2, decreasing our CO2 levels, we are drawing that equation that way, okay? Chemistry looks scary at first, but I want you to see how that works because I think sometimes that triggers some light bulbs for people like, all right, you know what, I'm, I'm following you. One goes up, one goes down. One goes up, another one goes up. It just depends how they're related, okay? Finally, the kidneys resorb and excrete bicarb through their own cellular process, through the own, their own uh, sites in, in uh, the renal cells. They will actually make hydrogen and bicarb, but then they kick the, bi the uh, hydrogen out. They excrete it in the urine uh, at the expense of some other ions in that. But they'll then be able to produce and add to the bicarb stockpile. Uh, but this takes a long time. This takes hours and days.